All decks go to full alert. 1966 was when Star Trek started. When it is DeForest Kelly standing, but Tiger Shapiro, who was the first assistant director, and he was also my first assistant director on My Favorite Martian, said, go sit in that seat, which ended up the navigator's seat. And that's where I sat, where the camera comes into me first, and then it goes past me to Shatner. And that's how I got started. That's how I got on, on Star Trek. First of all, it was kind of it was kind of a strange experience because I really had never done a big science fiction show. I played Lieutenant Hadley, the navigator. I would go in and sit in, in my seat. But then if D was going to come into the scene, then when the scene where I was sitting there was over, then I would go and stand where he was supposed to stand. And then I would, you know, basically choreograph, learn what he was going to do, where he would go, which I was quite good at because I'm a skater and dancer, so I'm used to choreography. And I also did the White Rabbit in uh, Shore Leave. And the funny part of it is I was looking out of the mouth. All of a sudden, they put the bow tie over the only place I can look out and actually were breathing. So that was when I first discovered I had claustrophobia. I also did the close-up with the Gorn costume, strictly because they wanted to see how uh, the eyes, which were made of crystal, were going to reflect. I never did the stunt part of it. I, I did just the close-ups. And this thing is heavy, heavy rubber. And it was, <laughs> it was like really hot. Set up a landing party. Let's go get them. Kirk out. We had two sound stages, one for the exterior, like the planets, and then the other, the bridge and the con and the whole bit were there. The sets were so fragile. Now they build them in construction so they could do all sorts of stuff. But in those days, they were cardboard. Even though it was Paramount, we were on the Desilu side. And it was at the back end of our stage, went right into Hollywood Cemetery. So the crypts were right behind our soundstage. We had dead Hollywood on one side, and we had the living Hollywood on the other. In the beginning, we had to learn to like Ward Factor 5, sir, and we'd press a button. I was playing it like a pipe organ. And when you hit those buttons, they would light up. And then the sound effects man would add me, 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 me. And one day he came up to me and he said, don't do so much. He said, you're playing this like, like a piano. Don't do it because every time you do, we have to add this ding, 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 ding. So they came up to us and told us not to, not to do quite that much. I'm picking up a signal, sir. Captain, that's the old Morse code call signal. Thank you. You see the screen, and it's over shoulder of both myself and Sulu. They brought that on rollers, and it came out from the side of the set. And then when you saw Shatner sometimes come from the con and go up and step right up to the screen, there was no screen there. Hell, hard over. Phasers, fire, point blank. Phasers, fire! We had to learn when the camera went this way, we had to go that way. <laughs> so I, remember, I remember one incident where we all went the wrong way and somebody in the back was going the other way. So we really had to learn when these tilts happened and we had to watch where the camera went. But then we had somebody standing in the back with like a little stick with a thing on it and they were going, <laughs> You know, like a tennis match. <laughs> Shall we turn off the tractor beam? Affirmative. We have the pilot aboard. I'll be right up. Kirk out. Follow me. The hallways that we used were not as many as it looked because we'd go 
one way in the hallway, they'd cut, reverse, and go the other end of the hallway so it looked like we were coming around the corner of a different uh, corridor. So actually, I think there were only three hallways, but they made them look longer because they would just reverse shots. At one time, in the very beginning, I remember them saying, we've got too many people there. It looks like Grand Central Station, you know? And they had, I mean, like extras walking the hallways. It was like, what's everybody doing? You're just walking the hallways. Nobody's running the ship. Forward phasers, stand by. Fire. They didn't use the fireworks that they use now. My God, they practically blow up the bridge, sparks and everything else in the new series. And uh, we didn't have all of that. We had a couple of funny, sparky things that came out, but they didn't blow the thing up like they do now. Automatic all points relay from Starfleet Command, Captain. Code one. In the very beginning, I just took the camera one day. I used to take it with me all the time, no matter what show it was on. I didn't hesitate to use the camera because nobody told me not to. I mean, nobody. It, there's only one time but Leonard kiddingly says, Billy, get off the set. It's obviously he's kidding. I was one of those rare people that had it with me all the time. I've got footage of my whole life on Super 8 and 8 millimeter, and it was just because I take the damn camera out every once in a while and, and I go, oh, I'm gonna take it with me. And it was with me all the time. It was a priceless moment that I, they didn't stop me from taking this. While investigating an uncharted planet, the Enterprise and at least this entire quadrant of space has been subjected to violent, unexplained stress and force. We had a tremendous amount of equipment for a television show. I mean, it, it was like, especially on location, it looked like a big movie. We were bussed out to location. It was like five in the morning. The nurse was sitting there with the beehive hat on, sound asleep, and the grip was asleep in the truck. It was freezing. Sun was just coming up, and it's like typically desert. When it's cold, it's cold. And this is uh, when everybody lined up at six o'clock in the morning for their bacon and eggs, which seems very funny now to think people stand in line for this, including Leonard. <laughs> but it was kind of an outing. It was fun to get away from the soundstage. I want every inch of this terrain checked. Look for footprint movement, anything. Call out if you spot anything. Don't be afraid to use your weapons. Well, in the alternative factor, the spaceship that they had uh, there was quite large. It was like 12 feet in diameter had the big plexiglass dome on it, and uh, the detail on it was quite amazing. It was again done at Vasquez Rocks. Mr. Spock and I are trapped on the planet Organia, which is in the process of being occupied by the forces of the Klingon Empire. The Klingons in the background were just in dark makeup, and their hair was disheveled, and they all wore the same uniform, the metallic vest, but they were nothing like they are uh, in the Klingons that are in the shows now. You are our visitors. Welcome, welcome. I am Aylborn. The set that we worked on, Aaron and Mercy, was shot at the Selznick Studios. It was part of the old set that wasn't burnt down and gone with the wind. And the actor in it that is shown on the screen is John Abbott, who was quite famous in Deception with Betty Davis. Very, very staid, almost Shakespearean. Very polite, very inward, like the parts he always played. If you don't mind, I should like to wander about the village and make some studies. Of course, my friend, our village is yours. Captain? In the show, Errands of Mercy, we used the goats, and they painted them green and purple and, and uh, blue. They're not dumb, but they're looking for something to eat. We had to be careful they didn't try to eat the costumes, you know, like the skirts or if somebody walked by, because they'll, they'll eat anything. They were not fun. One of the, the other extras was walking by one, and he really got butted. 
<laughs> Captain. I strongly suggest we direct our energies toward the immediate problem, accomplishing our mission here. You didn't really think I was going to beat his head in, did you? I thought you might. You're right. Well, Bill was very professional. Uh, he always knew his lines. He's one of those people who looked at a script and he knows his lines. But then there would be moments where he would suddenly be funny or he attempt at humor or something. So it, would, uh, it was usually when there was a tough scene to do. And after he finished the scene, it was like a release for him to kind of joke around. He was very good with the crew. He was always very friendly to the crew, but again, very professional. Leonard was totally Spock. When he was on the set, he was Spock. And you never saw Leonard smile when he was doing Spock, if you ever noticed that. Very seldom, he's a, he did smile with the one with Jill Ireland, but very seldom, you didn't see uh, Spock smile that much. Very in character very in character. But he'd have moments, you know, away from when the work was done, then he, then he was different. He'd go back to being Leonard Nimoy. Now you're sounding like Spock. If you're gonna get nasty, I'm gonna leave. It was a fun group because they didn't have, we didn't have any screaming and, you know, ranting and raving. And everybody got along and it was a, a nice atmosphere. And Jerry Finnerman, the cameraman, took time lighting, which is not done that much today. Eddie Paskey was Bill Shatner's stand-in, and Buddy Da Vinci was Leonard's stand-in. And then Jeannie Malone would stand in for all of the visiting uh, actresses that came in. A lot of the visiting actors would say to me, you know, it's so wonderful to work on this show because everybody makes you feel comfortable. And I must say, the directors were all wonderful. We didn't have a screaming director, and not one of them were a screaming director. Joe Pevney was the director on several of our shows, and Joe didn't realize my camera was shooting, and he started cavorting, is the word I love to use, and uh, suddenly realized I was taking it. And that's when he goes, are you taking that? What are you doing? <laughs> But everybody was so, it was like a family almost. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Salute. Yes, sir. Set course for Taras too. Aye, aye, sir. It was a thrill. I would go in and sit in my seat. I would be the navigator. And then suddenly I'd go off and I usually ended up being on the planet or someplace else or doing some weird creature. It got me away from the bridge. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love being on the bridge. That was my claim to fame. 